Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and this is another installment of my RimWorld story series that I was previously calling Randy's Hardcore Hard Mode, but the newest update changed some of the wording. That means we're changing the name of our challenge to Randy's Rough Commitment Run. If you haven't watched my other video explaining how this works, I can quickly explain. In this challenge series, we play the classic RimWorld scenario, Crash Landed, and I set the storyteller to Randy Random and set his difficulty to rough, and I make sure we play Commitment Mode, which means we can't undo any of the consequences that unfold during this playthrough. Other than that, we keep the default seed that's assigned to us and boom, select a random landing site. This should be fine. Then all I have to do is keep the default three colonists that I'm assigned, and we'll play whatever hand we're dealt and we can only change the name of these colonists. And of course the first colonist will be me, Hot Dog. Seriously? I'm incapable of being violent. Again. That's okay though. Next, we have Tao, who's one of Pixel Rookie's Discord members that will be joining me in the beginning. Tao might be lacking in some skills, but has some other high skills to make up for it. And finally we have Swarmlord, who is also one of my Discord members. He has a little bit more strength in melee and shooting, which we could definitely use. So looking over our overall skills, they're pretty okay. We can definitely make this work. And from this point on, just sit back and enjoy the story of Hot Dog, Tao, and Swarmlord that unfolds in the next series of Randy's Rough Commitment Run Challenge. After a terrible accident with their spacecraft, Hot Dog, Tao, and Swarmlord crash landed into a foreign planet. Fortunately, they're all intact and managed to grab supplies for their emergency landing. After quickly surveying the surrounding area, it looks like they landed in a valley between two mountains. They knew the best thing to do is find a location to set up a temporary shelter. Right by their landing zone, they found an abandoned structure that could be fixed up and they could sleep in it. Just south of the structure was a good area to set up some growing zones. After all, they had no idea just how long they'd be down here and if their ship's emergency help beacon even worked. They quickly established a dumping zone right below there and a temporary stockpile zone. The three survivors were ready to begin. Swarmlord was their top shooter, so he equipped the rifle and Tao grabbed the revolver. Since Hot Dog was incapable of violence, he didn't really need a weapon. Since Swarmlord was their strongest fighter, he also equipped the armor vest, pants, and helmet. The first day was a success as they had a place to sleep comfortably, but they knew they had long days ahead of them. With no means to escape unless they're rescued, they decided it would make sense to build a base in this area. Hot Dog worked on the beginning foundations of it while Swarmlord and Tao worked on planting crops for food supplies. At the end of the second day, they had most of their base's foundation completed. After being there for a couple more days, they decided to name their faction and settlement. They decided to call themselves the Pixel Rookies 2.0, and they called their settlement New Raleigh 2.0. Hopefully this goes better than the first New Raleigh run. They knew that in order to maintain a colony, they'll need electricity and the means to store it, so they decided to research on how to construct batteries. On the sixth day, they had their first contact with another person. It was someone who lived with the wild animals of the area. The decision was made to capture her and try and recruit her to help with their settlement. Now that the foundation of the base is finished, the next couple steps is to get some power running into it. They built some wind turbines to power the base. They wanted to have a setup for cooking and storing food. They'll turn the cave beside the kitchen into a freezer for food. All that's left to do is run the power directly into the kitchen and build a freezer so food won't spoil. On the 14th of April May, a heat wave hit New Raleigh 2.0. This can be dangerous, so they placed some coolers in each room to help with that. Before they could even finish building them though, their prisoner passed out because of the heat. Tao rescued her and set her back into the bed and tended to her. Unfortunately, she didn't make it. The following night, she passed away from a heat stroke. Everyone felt guilty that they brought her into this and she died because of it. The least they could do is give her a proper burial. Life was hard in this room world. Tao finally finished the research and batteries so they could finally store excess energy that the turbines generated. The next step is researching geothermal power to produce a ton of power for their long-term plans. A battery storage area was built and power lines were run to it. On the 9th of Jugus, a transport pod crashed right outside of New Raleigh 2.0. Hot Dog rescued him and placed him in captivity to heal him up and try to recruit them to join the colony. Now that they had proper storage of excess electricity, it was time to add some lights to the colony so it felt like a proper living space. Everything was moving along nicely. That was until a tribal man raided their base and started attacking immediately. 
The fight was quick, though. Tao and Swarmlord worked together to quickly dispatch him. After days of attempts, they finally convinced their captive to become a member of their colony. We'll name him Hoff after another member of our Discord channel. Welcome to New Raleigh 2.0, Hoff. Hoff didn't have any combat experience, but it was still good to have him armed with a spare handgun that they had in storage. Since they didn't have another room prepared yet, Hoff temporarily shared a room with Tao. Everyone agreed that there was no need for corpses to be laying around their base, so they dug another grave for the tribesmen that attacked and laid him to rest. New Raleigh 2.0 was slowly growing, but progress was still looking good. In the middle of the night, they received a cry for help over their comms, begging for safety and an agreement to join their colony if they offered protection from their attackers. Everyone agreed they could definitely use an extra person in New Raleigh 2.0, so they offered safety and a new recruit joined the ranks. We'll name this colonist Wilfred Avatar, aka Fravatar, who requested to be in the series on my last video. We're excited to have you with us. Now let's take care of these raiders. Fravatar has lots of points of melee, so he'll equip the knife. The raiders will be coming from the south, so our three fighters prepared for the invasion from the narrow south entrance. While they were setting up, the raiders began their assault. During the chaos of the firefight, Fravatar flanked them and took one of them out. This was enough to cause the other raider to flee for their life. Another successful defense. Another grave was prepared to be dug and a party was thrown to celebrate their victory and welcome Fravatar as the fifth member of New Raleigh 2.0. Spirits were high and things were looking good. Can the members of New Raleigh 2.0 continue to thrive or will Randy Random throw something awful their way soon and be their demise? Stay tuned for the next episode and see what happens with Hot Dog, Tao, Swarmlord, Hoff, and Fravatar. If you'd like to be part of the series as a colonist or a future series in RimWorld, let me know in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, have a good one.